Mr. Molinar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good to see all of you today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Dr. Tavik, I'd like to start by asking you, uh, I know you're new in this role, but you're familiar with um, policies, and I noticed you have a background as a, in ethics, advising on ethics. And um, it's recently come to my attention that there is a policy at the NIH where uh, scientists and people can receive royalties. Um, one of the concerns I have, and I'd like you to speak to this issue, is the NIH is in the process, you know, in the midst, as you know, of you know, awarding grants for research, is also in the position of sort of evaluating or giving opinions on drugs that work or don't work. And the idea that scientists may be benefiting financially from the work that they've done at NIH, that creates to me the appearance of a conflict of interest. And um, just building on what Mr. Cole said about public confidence in the NIH, to me, uh, one of the biggest concerns people had during this last couple of years is were they getting truthful information from their government? Could they trust what people were saying about the medicines? And um, to me, that creates a very disturbing um, appearance. And I'd like you to comment on that policy uh, and whether you are going to take a fresh look at that policy. The award of royalties is based on a Bayh-Dole Act, which makes no distinction as to whether or not the inventor is paid by the government, the private sector, academia, and so forth. So we are following the Bayh-Dole Act when it comes to that. So if I understand what you're saying, so you're saying it's federal law that allows the NIH to do that? That's correct. Okay. But in terms of the potential for conflict, no individual who is in a decision-making role on a particular product would um, have benefited from being the inventor of that product because we separate out those functions. The individuals who make recommendations to leadership of institutes and centers are in the extramural space. The individuals who are making the discoveries that, that you speak to are in the intramural space. They're, they're active scientists. And we, we do not allow those two things to inter, inter, interdigitate. Well, but my understanding is leaders of the organization have received royalty payments. Some, I, I think, Dr. Fauci, you've said that you've donated your royalties to charities, is my understanding. Um, but it, what, what strikes me is, you're in a position where you're saying certain drugs don't work, but then you can at the same time be getting royalties from other, pro and I, I understand you're saying there's a firewall, but I, that information has not been made public, and I think sooner rather than later, you should make that information public because right now, I think the NIH has a credibility problem, and this only feeds into this. And I'm just learning about this. People have always, in my district, been saying, well, you know, so-and-so has a, a financial interest in a certain, you know, they don't like ivermectin because they aren't benefiting from that royalty, or they don't like hydroxychloroquine. Now, you may have very sound scientific reasons for either recommending a medicine or not, but the idea that people have a financial benefit from certain research that's been done and grants that were awarded, that to me is the height of the appearance of a conflict of interest. Again, NIH does not, um, we support the science that validates whether an intervention is or is not efficacious. Uh, we don't say this is good and this is bad. Um, well, I, I, truthfully, I, I would say you've had leaders of NIH saying certain medicines are not good. Based upon the clinical trials that were supported by the agency. But if the, if the agency is awarding who the beneficiary of the grant who's doing the trial, and there are somehow finances involved that there's a financial benefit, 
that could be accrued if someone's, uh, you know, patent or invention is considered valid? Do you not see that as a conflict or an appearance of a conflict of information? I, I, I certainly can understand that it might seem as an appearance, but and, and, and it's the sort of thing that maybe we could uh, work together on so that we can explain to you the firewalls that we do have in place uh, because they are significant and substantial. Okay, well, I would appreciate that, and I think in terms of restoring public trust, I think that would be a good next step. Thank you. I yield back, Madam Chair.